Hello. This is a continuation of our discussion group summary videotaping on our discussion group that we call a soul therapy or study of midot based on a book by Rav Moshe Don Kastenbaum and a book called Alam Midot. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're meeting every Sunday, 9 o'clock in Ariel, from 9 to 10, right after Shachrit every Sunday. And uh, members of the group asked us to record our sessions, or at least do a summary video as uh, past sessions. So this will be a, every Sunday, will be Sunday number one, Sunday number two, Sunday number three. And this is the second recording of the third Sunday, so we'll call it session 3-2. And if there's no more recordings between now and today is Thursday, between now and this coming Sunday, which will be, by the way, January, Sunday will be January um, uh, 33rd, January 33rd, 2020. 31, 33, January has 33 days. Um, so that uh, recording will be number four. So today we addressed three things we kind of touched on during the uh, meeting of uh, our group. And of course, this recording going to a limited group only, to members and non-members only, uh, limited to members and non-members only. And the three topics we talk about is uh, basically a hypothetical debate between Rabbi Soloveitchik and Alta Slobodka how they see things on Jewish education, Jewish development, the best. So, the, with the three topics we talk about. One is, okay, one is, uh, here's an example. I uh, forgot a couple of days ago, fortunately it doesn't happen very often, but I forgot to say Arvit. And you're just supposed to say uh, prayer three times a day, Shachrit, Mincha, Arvit, three times a day. And if you don't say, if you, for some reason you forgot it, you're supposed to then say a meter of the previous uh, session at the following session. If you skip Shachrit for some reason, then at the end of the next prayer session, Mincha, you'll say a meter for the Shachrit. And if you forgot uh, at um, Mincha, then Arvit, you'll catch up on uh, uh, Mincha. And if you forgot Arvit, then the next prayer will be Shachrit. So a Shachrit, you say, the prayer are just a meter for the Arvid. That's not a great situation to me, but it's a little uh, backup if something does happen for whatever reason. So, in my case, what happened is I went to the I went to the uh, dinner presentation, very nice presentation of uh, um, a rabbi comes and makes a little uh, discussion. It's informal at the cafe every Monday at six o'clock. The group gets together at a restaurant. Moshe Bingingi runs the uh, restaurant, and people get together there and eat, and Rabbi may have a Torah discussion, which I attended the first time, and I really enjoyed it. And the most important thing on that group, as a side comment that I enjoy, was after everybody ate and Rabbi spoke, very nice presentation on Exodus, on how Pharaoh was doing this and that, very good topic, but when everybody left, Ted still was behind, and I talked to him, and Ted is a... Uh, a uh, nuclear medicine doctor. So I told him that I have sometimes the symptoms like I have a like sinus pressure here and it causes a lot of slight dizziness and do, what to do about it. So Sam suggested to gargle with salt because the salt migrates through sinus passages and kills the germs and it opens the channels, equalizes the pressure and makes, feel, makes you feel very good. He also said don't use the neti pot, the psh, with a saline water because the salt the deposit there initially does work on bacteria, but bacteria get used to it and it becomes ineffective. So it was very big. So I tried that and I see it seemed like it relieved the pressure here. I only did this uh, so salt gargling for about like maybe a week, so Monday, well, less than a week. I think already Mizran Hashem has some improvement. So it's a good to learn Torah because it helps your sinuses. In general, it's a good thing, even for that. So that's like, so anyway, come to my example. So I forgot after that dinner, I came home. I left a prayer book on the kitchen table, so I don't forget. It was a reminder. Somehow I forgot. And I woke up in the morning at about maybe 6 o'clock in the morning. And at 6.40, 
is a chakrit we have. And the sunrise is about 6.50. So I look at the dates, like six. the dawn is 6.20. 6.20 is the dawn. At around 6.50 is a tefillin and talis. And 7.37 is the sunrise. So according to the uh, brachot, like if you look on the Talmud, and you study the first Misechta of the Talmud, essentially, it talks about when the, it begins with, the whole Talmud begins with, when is the first time you say, earliest time you have to Shemar, when Kohanim that were Tamei come home, when is that? Uh, roughly 8, 9 o'clock in the evening, let's say, skipping a lot of details of discussion. And up to how late? Up to midnight, up to, even up to dawn. And there's a, uh, you don't rely on the later dates, but if something happens, you kind of can rely on it. That's what I, as a non-educated Jew, understand it. And please, if rabbis who listen to that, please correct me. So, uh, so there's a, but if you miss that, if you don't say it until dawn, you missed it. What happens? I guess you go to the directly in the elevator basket to hell and burn there. Not a good idea, I suppose. So. Uh, what happens if you just after dawn? So the magic things are dawn, when it just the light lights the eastern horizon. That's dawn, 620 it was. Then at about 650, it's called four amot. It's the area where you recognize your wife or your friend from a distance of about six feet. So it's a little bit more light, but not sunrise yet. And then finally sunrise, and we can talk about, is that one the disk for the sun? just came out from the horizon, or entire disk for the sun came out, also several minutes difference. But basically it's those three things, the dawn, 6.20, then roughly 30 minutes late, roughly 6.49, 6.50 is the earliest talit and, and tefillin, 6.50 let's call it, and then an hour later, roughly 45 minutes, is actually sunrise. So after sunrise, you cannot make up the missed RV to Amida before. You have to do it before dawn. And then it was 6.20. I got up to the kitchen table in the morning at about 6.10. And I saw the prayer book laying there. I said, oh, holy macro, I forgot to say the RV. And I thought, maybe I'll say it now. So I said it, and I don't remember it was actually after 6.20 or a little bit before. So technically I was in compliance to, on the last on the last tail end of opportunity to say our Amida for Arvit or not. So uh, if I said it before 620, I think I'm okay. But if I said it 621, burn. So um, uh, I wasn't sure. And uh, so I, when I came into shul, I asked and I was advised that uh, uh, if you said it after dawn, it probably doesn't count. So you have to say it again. So when the Shachrit was going on, when Shachrit finished, I said Amina for Arvid one more time. The reason I bring all this up, and if you don't follow details, it's a good idea in light of our book study not to worry about anything I said. Just skip them. Because there's a people who grew up religious learn from their childhood, and they would be very interested and healthy for them to go to the details of what I'm just discussing. But if I didn't, if you didn't grow up religious and you reach 50, 60 years old, and all of a sudden you want to become Talmud Chacham, maybe for some people it would work with Rabbi Akiva. For most people, important things to have a balance in your life. Be happy. And if you drain this dumb cup of your brains with these discussions I'm doing right now, you're wasting 10 minutes of people's time. So, what I said might be of interest to you. Rabbi Soloveitch, you probably would really like that and have a long couple of hours lectures or weeks about how exactly they do that. And do you say Amida including this or no including that? But the best advice here for our group, just forget it. Next time, try not to forget. Say it in given time and drain is them cold. Don't, don't tease your brains anymore. Nice. That's and the next subject I want to talk about. Family living together. And that's also Midot. Many times I discuss with people, and we talk in our group, that what exactly are our problems? How can the Torah help us fix our problems? Torah is we need to learn Torah. Because, as the book says, it helps us to hone our midot. One big problem is the families don't live together anymore. 
It wasn't supposed to be like that initially. It's supposed to be, you know, you live here, your brother across the street, your cousin over here, your uncle. Uh, here's my, uh, here's my uh, uncle's tractor. He's just moving to plow the field, so he'll be come over for dinner after lunch. And they were going to the holidays together. So that family living together was always a pattern for a long time. Probably at Mishnah days was still on. But then eventually, like today, this is crazy concept for most people. For me, it's not crazy. I love to have that. But usually, you know, the, uh, the son is graduating from college, from high school, goes to college. Let's say you grow up in Atlanta and he goes to New York or Wisconsin because great college, get great education. Totally, he goes there, gets married after college, goes with his wife to San Diego, lives in San Diego. His parents, his wife's parents are from Montana. And they have kids, and they keep, so it will keep spreading out, out of great opportunities because you get a great education and make more money. You have more cars, more building, more house, bigger loan, um, vacation every time, even to Israel. Great opportunities to do it. That's life. Well, is it really? So which one is better? So... In the last study that we have every morning, we have a very great class. Rabbi Friedman is teaching the class, and we're now teaching, we're now on uh, a Baal Basra. And there is a recording that I'm attaching to the email to which this link is also attached. And that's a Baal Basra 66B. And the recording the Rabbi, it's roughly 45 minutes an hour recording the Rabbi does. And in the tape attached to this, between times 1730, 17 and a half, 17 minutes, 30 seconds, to 25 minutes. That's a roughly like eight minute segment. We actually had a discussion in class and I was just wondering what Rabbi would suggest, how to handle the situation when you're yearning to have a family together, but it's too late, they all spread all over America, all over the world. How do you, is it possible to, to sure this process back and, and reconstruct and fix what you have missed in your younger days? Perhaps mistakes you made, whatever. That's also we discussed in our group. So listen to that tape. Attach and see what you think. That's the second topic. And that's also, I think, not probably Soloveitchik would like to spend too much time discussing, but Alter Slabotka uh, probably will, would be touching on that Rabbi Nason Tzvi. Finkel would say, that's a things of the heart. Let's discuss it right and wrong from emotional things, midrashic things, if you will. Heart versus brain. Okay. And the third topic I want to discuss is about eating too much. Also was a discussion. You know, you're supposed to have, I think, I'm coming to a conclusion, that Torah should be natural, um, organic ingredient of our life. We have to live Torah. Torah has to be within us, and we have to be within Torah. And also it makes it life easy and simple, natural. You live naturally. So when it comes, in the old days, people only ate like twice. The guy gets up in the morning, he eats breakfast, goes to the field, comes back at lunchtime, 1 o'clock, have lunch. My mother used to say, breakfast, you, use your, you eat yourself. Lunch, you share with your friend. And a dinner, give to your enemy. Good, healthy, doctorate advice. My mother was a teacher. My aunt is a doctor. I'm sure many of you probably would, would have been advised similar. So... Two meals, and then the guy comes home in all the days. It's already coming dark, so he doesn't eat very much because it's 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, dark. You go to bed. Don't want to go to bed on a big stomach because, you know, don't want to eat. First of all, there wasn't that much food, but even if it was, it's not good to sleep like that. You wake up in the morning, hey, yucky mouth, stomach, digestion, indigestion. Not normal. So what was normal? Well, people said in our meeting that people didn't eat that much. They, they have... It's, Two potatoes and a little bit of a meat, maybe, if you had meat, a little onion, tomatoes, and that's it. So maybe when you came to to it, to your home in the evening, after prayers, after Arvit, it was dark, you know, you came home, and maybe you had a cucumber with a little bit of a salt, glass of water, <clears throat> goes to bed. Today, in a Western society, what do we do on Friday night? In Israel, it's kind of similar still. But in America, it's common. People getting together, get friends, and their wives cooking, and they have 15 salads and seven schnitzel, and this, and there's a wonderful conversation. You talk to people, you have a good time, 
it's 9 o'clock, it's 10, 30 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you're going to bed, storming up to here, wake up in the morning, oh, yeah, no problem that a good shot of Maalox wouldn't fix. Is that normal? I think it's good to eat less. One, somebody told me, uh, uh, one of the rabbis told me the story, I forget, what it, not Soloveitch, but somebody else that was standing in line, I guess for Shabbos, and a guy didn't wash, in other words, he wasn't, he wasn't going to rob, he wasn't going to eat bread. And his colleague, the friend, also very observant, says, I didn't feel to wash. Meaning, Andy gave a bigger dinner was a honor Shabbat because bread, and he said something, yeah, who needs all the calories? <laughs> Big rap. He said, Why should I suffer? Shabbat's so supposed to be enjoyment, honor Shabbat. So if normally a peasant only had two potatoes and onion for a regular meal, for Shabbat, maybe you have four potatoes and two onions and a little bit of better salad, but not necessarily 25 schnitzel lamb and, ch and chicken and beef, beef strong enough and this and this. That's probably American invention to eat so much. Not healthy for you. But stereotype, I think, nowadays is, whoa, God forbid, we don't have a big dinner, we don't have a Shabbos, you have to eat midnight, have another, have another steak. So that's another thing, how to properly eat to honor Shabbat. Is honoring Shabbat means eat a lot? Or honoring Shabbat means that you talk about Torah, you talk about what we're discussing, you meet, you sit with a family, with friends, you socialize, you eat a little bit, you eat healthy, maybe more and more fancier than normally during the week, but you don't just stop yourself. And for me, I have trouble with controlling myself. That's what I'm working on Midot for this book. Put in front of me a small plate, I'll finish, you'll be happy. Big plate, feel exact, you'll be happy. Three plates, feel exact. I have very poor control of the portion. It's called portion control. So maybe portion control also will be something that we need to add to our discussions in our group. So with that, those three topics, again, which is what happens when you forget uh, 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 a prayer during the day, what do you do? Or nothing. Just remember, don't do it again. Second time, family living together. Is that cause of concern, anxiety, problems to people today? What's your problem? Ah, my problem. I wish my brother lived closer. I didn't ask. What do you do? But I don't know. But I want to come to a group to talk about it. Anybody else have similar? Second one. And the third one, are we overeating on Shabbat? Midot? How does our rectification of our midot by studying Torah help that issue? It's not coming probably from Sanhedrin. Maybe Shulchan Aruch addresses that. Or maybe in Zohar or in Midrash. There's things like that covered. If you know where does it talk about, it would be nice to read an article. Not modern article, but something classics. It would be good to study that. And with that, closing the presentation. It's about 20 minutes discussion. Those of you who are suffered through my discussion and blubbering to the end of the tape, you now gain 18 minutes. Oh, magic number. 18 minutes of this lecture. And then if you want to uh, listen more to that and hear what others will say, I'll see you on Sunday. This Sunday, the 33rd of January, 2020. Members and non-members only. Make sure you have your pass. At the real, this Sunday, 9 o'clock. Shabbat Shalom. Behave.